Sports Social Podcast Network. Hey there. Did you know Kroger always gives you savings and rewards on top of our lower than low prices? And when you download the Kroger app, you'll enjoy over $500 in savings every week with digital coupons. And don't forget fuel points to help you save up to $1 per gallon at the pump. Want to save even more? With a Boost membership, you'll get double fuel points and free delivery. So shop and save big at Kroger today. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Savings may vary by state. Restrictions apply. See site for details. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Monday on which the Reds remain top of the league after a 4-1 win away to Brentford. Now, obviously, we hadn't won there in our previous visits since their promotion to the Premier League, but this time we made no mistake, left nothing to chance, and fully deserved a comprehensive win. We got the ball rolling with Darwin Nunes scoring in the first half. Virgil with a long punt down the field. Diogo Jota outstripped the defence. He headed the ball across. Absolutely phenomenal assist by Diogo. Darwin runs on to it. And... Because he's missed quite a few 1v1s, there is a, there is always that, oh, kind of feeling. And he gets through 1v1 with the keeper. The keeper stands up, makes himself as big as possible. But because of the way he makes himself as big as possible, with his arms up high, you sort of feel like, this is easy now. Slot it to, to beside his feet and you're going to score. Darwin being Darwin, zero fucks given. Inside the penalty area, with a six foot three goalkeeper standing in front of him, lifts it over him and scores. It is, it is bananas. It is outrageous. To even think about that as an option is outrageous. To pull it off is incredible. It is a phenomenal finish by Darwin. Now, not everything in the first half went our way. We lost Curtis Jones to injury after an awkward fall and a twist of the ankle. He tried to come back on. The ankle wasn't right. Off he went. Ryan Gravenberg replaced him. This is obviously a game where we went in without Alison Becker, without Trent, without Dominic Zabozlai. You thought once the Jones injury happened, this is going to be tough now because he's so good and so important to us. But we got our goal just two minutes later and that righted the mood. But then a couple of minutes later, Diogo Jota is down And it seemed fairly innocuous to begin with. Then you see that he's being stretched off. And then you see the replay. And it looks horrible the way his knee flexes as Norgard, who'd also been the one who injured Curtis, I believe. Norgard lands on Jota and his knee kind of compresses and it just, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good at all. So off he goes. Now, fortunately, on his place comes one Mohamed Salah, making his return to the team. And Salah clearly arrived in a mood to cause pain and suffering for Brentford. Uh, He made our second goal. Gorgeous pass to Alexis, who 
shifted the ball past the defender and finished well, put us 2-0 up. Mo got our third goal. It's a very simple agricultural goal. It's Queeving Kelleher with the long clearance down the field. Cody Gakbo gets up and wins it. Lovely flick on. The defence is all over the place. Very un-Brentford-esque. Mo runs on, keeps his composure and finishes well. That could have been Mo's third goal. He'd only been on the pitch 20 minutes. He'd already had an assist. Now he gets a goal. It could have been his third goal. Because in the first half, Luis Diaz does really well, breaks in on the left, cuts the ball back. You see Mo swing his foot at it, you think goal. He miss kicks it. But when you see the replay, you realize that Darwin actually tried to cushion the ball from Mo and took it off the, the angle. And that's why Mo couldn't make good contact with it. And then in the second half, Virgil, with a gorgeous headed pass, puts Mo in 1v1, and unfortunately he just pulled his shot at the near post. But he did get his goal from the Gakbo flick on, and that put us in a really strong position. Obviously they pulled one back through Ivan Tony. Phenomenal save from Cuevin, literally a split second before Tony puts it in the back of the net. Uh, this one I would put at Robbo's feet, far too aggressive at going and, and, and attacking the uh, the ball carrier, just being Robbo, basically. Um, Gravenberg, the one knock on him in this performance, because he was really good and he played a vital role in the second goal, the one knock on him would have been, it was a bit of a lazy attempt at a challenge. Virgil then gets caught between two players makes a decision to go to the ball carrier. It's the right decision, but it leaves Vissa unmarked. And from there, they managed to score. Um, They'll be crying. And there has been crying mostly from Everton fans, less so from Brentford fans, loads of crying though from Everton fans about the corruption of the Premier League, because a game that it didn't involve them in the slightest and had nothing to do with them. And if anything, did them a favour by Brentford getting nothing. Um, Andy Robertson fouls Ivan Tony. It's a penalty. It is. It just is a penalty. He clatters into him. He doesn't make a real attempt to get the ball. It should have been a penalty. However, however, what I note in all of the crying is they don't point to the two clear penalties that we should have had. Now, In the first half, Diogo Jota at a Liverpool corner is wrestled and mauled and besmirched and borderline molested to the floor by a Brentford defender. Uh, This was tagged as mutual holding, whatever the fuck that is. Jota was not holding. He was trying to get himself away from said defender and was bundled to the floor. That's a penalty. And then in the second half, Luis Diaz breaking in on the left is brought down in the penalty area. It was either Collins or Ayer. Clear contact, clear foul, clear penalty. Wasn't given. Wasn't given. Because Michael Oliver is a terrible set of lads. And as Trev Downey pointed out at the weekend eats his sandwiches with a knife and fork. Um, We did get our fourth, though. Uh, Cody Gakbo taking advantage of some atrocious defending by Nathan Collins. Uh, It's a a speculative hoik by Joe Gomez. Collins makes a mess of it. Gakbo nips onto it, does really well, great composure, and finishes excellently to give us a 4-1 win that we fully deserved. Uh, Like I said, they can cry about a penalty. We should have had two. Uh, If you want to go back out and take those penalties anytime, lads, we'll happily do so. Um, Mention of Cuevin Kelleher here. Two outstanding saves. Uh, One just before the Tony goal, and then the second from Tony himself. Ball kind of came off Tony's shoulder. Really good reflexes and instincts from Cuevin to pull that one back from the line. Um, 
Gravenberg, like I said, played really well when he came on. Seemed to remember that he's 6'3 and massive. Used his frame really well. Uh, pressed with purpose, which was nice to see. And just didn't take anything out of the ball. Just kept the ball moving, which was good. Um, and Mo, I mean, Jesus wept. How good is that guy? How good is he? I, I said at the weekend, I, I think he might now be the best attacker in Premier League history. Now, if people want to say Thierry Henry, I'm not going to argue with that. Thierry Henry was ludicrously good. Absolutely ludicrously good. So if you want to say that Thierry Henry is still the number one, that's fine. There's going to be no argument here. But if he's 1A, then Mo is 1B. And the gap between them is not close. Or, sorry, is not big at all. It's very, very close. 17-18 season, 44 goals and 16 assists in 52 games. 18-19, 27 and 12 in 52 games. 19-20, 23 and 13 in 48 games. 2021, 31 and 6 in 51 games. The only season he didn't get double figures assists. 21-22, 31 and 16 in 51. 22-23, surrounded by shit, 30 and 16 in 51. And this season, 19 and 10 in 28 games so far. That's 205 goals and 89 assists in 333 games for the club. For context, Henri had 226 goals, so 21 more, and 88 assists, so one less, in 370 games, so 37 more games. That's his first spell at Arsenal. And obviously was playing through the middle, whereas Mo plays wide. So you're looking at 394 goals and assists for Mo, 314 goals and assists for Henri. 20 more goals and assists for Henri in 37 more games. If Mo stays next season, he's passing Henri in terms of numbers. And when we look at trophies, there's there's an idea out there that Henri won more than he did, but Henri won two league titles and two FA Cups at Arsenal, and that's it. That's his haul at Arsenal. Two league cups, or sorry, two league titles, two league cups. Mo has a Premier League and a Champions League. Now, I would say a Premier League and a Champions League holds more weight than two Premier League titles. He's also won an FA Cup, an EFL Cup, a Cup Winners, uh, a, a Club World Cup, and a Super Cup. So I would say an EFL Cup, a, cu- a Club World Cup, and a Super Cup, that easily adds up to an FA Cup. I think Mo has a more impressive trophy haul. He's won more trophies to begin with. He's won six to Henri's four. There's still this season where we're chasing a quadruple I think he's already got a better trophy haul because he has the Champions League there. Now, Henri won one at Barca, but we're talking purely Premier League era here, or Premier League stints here. I think Mo's had... Sports Social Podcast Network. ...more success in terms of what he's won. And the numbers, I mean, he's if he plays another 37 games to Liverpool, he will get 20 more goals or assists. He just will. And he's doing this playing wide. Henri did it playing through the middle. Now, I know he drifted to the left, but he started through the middle. I think Mo has a real case to be 1A, but it's neck and neck between the two of them. Machine for machine. Um, Right. This is Anfield have an exclusive interview with Robbie Fowler talking about him coaching abroad and the battle for recognition uh, there's an update on Diogo Jota here but it's based on reports in Portugal so you know we'll 
will not hold our breath here massively. But the suggestion from record in Portugal is that it's a PCL injury, not the feared ACL injury, and that he could miss around two months of action. Now, that would bring him back in the middle of April in time for the run-in. Um, but it would mean that he'd miss that he'd miss a lot of games. Now, the other thing that John O'Sullivan pointed out yesterday, two weeks of that two months is actually an international break. So that's a big help. And also, should we beat Southampton, the Everton game would be rescheduled. The Everton league game would be rescheduled maybe for a time when Jota is back. Um, So, assuming it's two months, he would miss Luton, Chelsea, Southampton, Nottingham Forest, both legs of the Europa League round of 16, Manchester City, Everton or FA Cup quarter final, Brighton, Sheffield United, Manchester United, Europa League quarterfinal first leg, Crystal Palace, and then it gets hazy. It could be the second, he could also miss the second leg of the Europa League quarterfinal. He could also miss Fulham. That would bring us up to the 20th of April. It's a lot of games. It's a lot of games. And we've got a lot of games left because we're in four competitions. Now, that fixture is obviously can change if we progress further in the FA Cup. It can change if we don't progress in the Europa League or whatever the circumstance might be. But I think if we get lucky with this, he might be back in and around Crystal Palace, 13th of April. And while it would would definitely hurt to lose a player of his quality for 12 games between now and then, at least he'd be back for the run-in. And he's not the type that generally takes too long to get up to speed. So if we can work our way through this, and like there's some very favourable fixtures in there. Luton home is a favourable fixture. Southampton in the Cup, favourable. Forest, favourable. I think Everton's a favourable fixture. I know it's the Derby. They are shit. Sheffield United, favourable. You're really looking at the Cup final, City at home, and United away. They're the games we'd really miss him in. If you want to throw Everton in, fine, but they're the games we'd really miss him in. And Brighton, Brighton home as well. But I think Darwin and Mo and Diaz and Gakpo should be enough to deal with them and the rest. City and United, they're the ones I'm looking at and thinking, right, that's that's the kick. That's the kick here is that he's not there for those two games because they're both massive. Um, what else do this is on field have for us? Uh, Jürgen prays for Cuevin Kelleher, fully deserved. Michael Owen explaining why Darwin Nunez's finish was a madness. Um, it was a madness, but it was pure Darwin, so it's all good. Uh, Liverpool defender admits he may have to leave in the summer transfer window. That's Sepp Vandenberg. Uh, Virgil saying he's proud to be a Liverpool player and captain. Um, Liverpool name team staff not seen in 131 year history of the Reds that is that we had 11 players of 11 different national team allegiances starting the game an Irishman in Connor Bradley a Northern Irishman in sorry an Irishman in Cueven Keller a Northern Irishman in Connor Bradley though I am claiming both of them as Ireland because our island's small and if you don't like it, you can just go away. I'll send you a picture of Connor Bradley as a child wearing an Ireland shirt if you want. Um, Frenchman in Ibu, Dutchman in Virgil, Scotsman in Robbo, Endo, who's obviously Japanese, Alexis is Argentinian, Curtis is English, 
Jota is Portuguese, Darwin is uh, Uruguayan, and Diaz is Colombian. So 11 different nationalities or na- national teams there. Uh, what else do we have? Two Liverpool youngsters who are out on loan limping off at the weekend because, you know, we just do injuries. Uh, Owen Beck and Tyler Morton both forced off at the weekend. Uh, Liverpool's under-21s went to the Great White North and beat Newcastle 2-1. Uh, goals from Trainiani, who uh, just looks so special, and Cade Gordon uh, giving us the win there. Bobby Clark played that game, which is why he wasn't with the first team. Uh, the under-18s lost to Manchester City at the weekend. Um, moving on to Liverpool.com to see what kind of hopes and dreams are being sold. Uh, The lead piece is about Diogo Jota and the injury and the games he could miss. There is a piece about Bobby Firmino, uh, who's back on the goal trail after 16 games without a goal. So Bobby, I think, nabbed a hat-trick at the weekend. Darwin Nunes faces Man City risk. Alexis McAllister avoided a second. Liverpool ace may follow. I assume this is about the yellow cards. <clears throat> Liverpool's next five games compared to title rivals as Man City slip up. Obviously, City dropping points at the weekend at home to Chelsea. Um, they do still have their game in hand. If they win their game in hand, which is Brentford during the week, they will go above Arsenal. But there'll be a point behind us, which is a really good position for us to be in. Obviously, we play Luton. So we can go into the weekend with a four-point advantage before they kick a ball. Before Arsenal kick a ball, we'll be five points clear of them. They'll have days building up to that, knowing that we've already done the business, if we do the business. Um, let's see. There is uh, another piece about Diogo Jota and his injury. There's a piece about Luis Suarez. A piece about De Zerbi. Um, and apparently a Champions League manager, a Champions League winner wants the job. We'll come back to that. Uh, there's a piece about Sepp Vandenberg, a piece about Darwin, and another piece about Jürgen. Liverpool has unlocked new option for Jürgen Klopp, successor, and I'm finally ready to admit it. Well, who are you and why are you of such importance that you are ready to admit it? Um, let's have a quick gander at these before we move on to AnfieldIndex.com. Um, well, a former Bayern boss looks to be... Okay, who's the... Oh, Hansi Flick. Hansi Flick apparently has made it known that he would be interested in the Liverpool job. Hansi Flick did an unbelievable job with Bayern. He did not do a good job with the German national team. My belief is that he will soon be the Bayern manager again because I don't think Thomas Tuchel is going to survive. Um, uh, De Zerbi apparently says he's very proud to be linked to other jobs, but his focus is on Brighton. Uh, I assume he means for the moment. Um, Okay, this is Matt Addison uh, saying that it might be time to move Trent into midfield because Conor Bradley had another... Another really good outing at the weekend. Uh, Very, very good again. Um, Right. On on to AnfieldIndex.com. There is a piece about the injuries, uh, a piece about Darwin. There's the post-mortem on the weekend's game. There's another piece about Darwin. Ben Boxick has his latest piece up talking about Xabi Alonso's unsung hero at Bayer Leverkusen. And then podcast-wise, there is loads. So there is a Scouser Tommies, which Jim and Jay have put together. You should go and listen to that. There is the AIP, episode 378, Trev, Cam, and Lisa Marie. There's a 98-minute post-match Raw with myself, Trev, and Harry Sethi. And then there is an Anfield Index Pro with Dave Davis back from his Hollybops. That's just for you, Trev. Um, 
to talk about injuries, big games coming, big players coming back from injury, et cetera, et cetera, to make sure you check all of that out. Loads to come this week as well, but we'll leave it there. Thanks for listening, folks. I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.